in the Mediterranean coast. Uh, it's a city uh, that has been under construction. It's a city that has been under construction during the last 2,000 years. This is the diagram that explains how Barcelona was founded as Barcino, Barcino by the Romans uh, that make a wall and we create another city, another wall uh, made in the Middle Age. 450 years later, we decide to pull down the wall in order to extend the city. We have been 150 years building that city and now the city is already urbanized. The question is what we can do in a city that is already built. Che podiamo fare con una città che è costruita? Because this is the question, the main question that many cities in the world uh, already have the big challenge. During many years in the 20th century we have been growing our cities, but the cities right now are already done. So this is Barcelona in 1850, that in fact it had around 50,000 inhabitants, so it was the model, a perfect model for a Chita's Law today. A city surrounded by the walls with agriculture around and some other villages. But at that moment there was an important uh, revolution, the Industrial Revolution, that attract people from the countryside to the city. And there was another, the main important revolution for city was mobility, the train. So we had an engineer that was a socialist, utopic socialist, Cerda, and he wrote the, the general theory of urbanization. So the word urbanist was invented in Barcelona. And he proposed an extension for the city like this. A city that in fact as you can see here, every building should have a, a street with train and with mobility in front of it, and every building should have a green area in the backwards. So that means he was mixing the best from the ecological principles and the technological principles. He also made this section of the street that in fact more or less is the same section that we had been building during the 20th century with trees, separation between pedestrian and, and mobility. At that time the car didn't exist, but in fact based on these radical incredible engineers and architects that were planning the city in the 19th century, we had been working all our during the 20th century. So this was the other main invention, the cars, that every technology produced a different city. And the model for that technology is this one, that in fact had the big explosion, mostly in America. But now, obviously, we, we understand today that we cannot build a world based in this kind of, uh, let's say, urban pattern. Now, we have another revolution that was the computers. And the question is that internet have changed our city, but it didn't have our cities yet. The question is, which model propose for the city's internet? And this is the big question, because what is important about internet is not, let's say, the communication. What is important is the decentralization, the fact that the, instead to have only one television a meeting to everyone, there are many young people producing videos and uploading to YouTube. So the main principle is decentralization in front of centralization. And the question then is, if we have internet, how we can keep adding value to our cities that are already built? So obviously, this is Barcelona. We have a plan about urban development. We have many projects to be developed, like the high-speed train, like, uh, I mean, the transformation of the waterfront. There are many traditional urbanistic plans to be done. But we need a new mantra. We need a new principle that should guide our vision in the same way that our fathers did, like in the middle of 19th century. 
And in order to define this principle, we have been trying to analyze what is really a city, what is, which is the anatomy of a city. We, when we see this, this is related with the traditional urbanism. We see a city, we see streets, we see buildings, etc. But we have been working in the last 10 years in the, from the Institute of Advanced Architecture trying to define the anatomy of a city. And now, I mean, 30 years ago, environment was different to a city. Infrastructures were not part of urbanism. Architects, we were working only in the design of a city. But now, if we want to have an holistic vision that in fact is what you try to do from the Cheetah's Law, we need to understand that that city has different layers. The first layer is the environment where we take resources. There are six categories of infrastructure, information, water cycle, energy, the matter cycle, mobility, and the green layer. We need to understand the cities in a multi-scalar approach. City is not only the big avenue and the big scale. A city can be understood as uh, hundreds of uh, houses, as uh, buildings, as many buildings, as many blocks, neighborhoods, etc. So in this multi-scalar approach, we can go from our bed to the whole planet. Obviously, we have the, the people that is the reason why we make cities. And today, with the technologies of information, we are adding this layer that allows some other kind of interactions. So that's why we have a new mantra for Barcelona. The, our vision for the next 50 years is that Barcelona will become a self-sufficient city made out of produ productive neighborhoods at human speed inside a hyper-connected uh, zero-emission city. So our vision, our slogan is many slow cities inside a smart city. And you could tell us, well, that's a great slogan, but what are you doing related with this? This could be the map of a country. This could be a map of uh, United States of America. But this is the uh, map of United Districts of Barcelona. That means that if you want to manage a city, you need to understand that you need to develop identity in every neighborhood or every district. So from that point of view, uh, what we are trying to do is to come back to the scale of the district or neighborhood where the people lives and then connect all these neighborhoods between them with obviously with the right mobility but also with technology. This is a simple diagram thinking on these neighborhoods as a kind of cells and if we want to develop this mantra we need to develop this drawing. We need to make that every uh, a small district, as you can see here, has its own identity, and we need to develop the system to connect all of this. And this is in the scale of a city. This is the city of Barcelona, where 1.7 million people live. But this is the scale of the metropolitan area. This is where 4.5 million people live. In the center of this metropolitan area, you can see we have the Coiserola Park, and here is the Baidaura place, as uh, Mr. Olivetti was saying before. But this is, in Barcelona, all of those are districts, and those are other kind of municipalities. So, we think that it doesn't make sense to have cities like Mumbai, that are 20 million people, or Mexico DF, 20 million people, where you have a center that has a high quality, and you have the periphery that has a very low quality. The question is that we should define the quality uh, and it should arrive to every district and every neighborhood. And here you will see a, a, a very a, a clear sample. What is this? This is the map of the markets in Barcelona. Barcelona has local identity because we have markets in every district. In fact, now we are launching two competitions, one to develop a new market here and another market here. 
because if you really want to have a good neighborhood, you need to have a good market, you need to have a good library, you need to have obviously good school and good health center. So Barcelona is based on the idea of some kind of equalitarian vision about everyone con talking to everyone. Barcelona doesn't have neighborhood for rich people and neighborhood for, for poor people because the engineer Cerda make a plan where in the, uh, in the 19th century, rich people were living in the main floor and poor people were living in the upper floor, but they were living in the same staircase and the kids were playing together in the street. So that means that the only way to create good cities is a city where there is no social segregation and there is not neighborhood segregation, where you don't have a very strong center and a very poor periphery. The center and periphery discourse is based on this American model where we saw the car and the suburbs. Suburbs are wrong. We need to promote that every neighborhood is able to produce energy, every neighborhood should have industry, and every neighborhood should have the right, let's say, um, the right uh, public facilities. So this is one, this is the map, or uh, maybe you don't see well, but this is the map of the shopping malls in Barcelona. We also have shopping malls related with the main avenue, but this is not relevant for the model. What is relevant for the model is to have neighborhood with the right identity. This is one question. The second question is the quality. The quality is fundamental. Uh, some people when came to Barcelona say, well, Barcelona is very strange. Sometimes it looks like Florence, sometimes it looks like Paris, and sometimes it looks like New York City. Yes, because as you can see here, we have a Roman city, we have a medieval city, we have a good 19th uh, century city, and we have a modern city. And we have good architecture along all these times. So you can find one of the biggest Roman walls in Spain for sure. You can have incredible gothical architecture. You can have Gaudi's 19th century, and you can have Jean Nouvel architecture. Maybe it's one of the few cities in the world where you can see all the layers of the history at the same time. It's not, the future is not about a frozen city. If you have very good medieval architecture, you need very good modern and contemporary architecture. In Firenze, you can see incredible re Renaissance architecture, but not modern architecture. And in Paris, you can see some very good landscape, but maybe not the right modern architecture. Anyhow, this is another important principle, that is the quality. And now, I would like to show you some projects we are developing about how to transform Barcelona into this idea of many slow cities inside a smart city. So you see here the uh, Coiserola Park, this is the city, and now we are trying that the nature come back to the city. We are building these green corridors that want to bring back the nature to the city, and we want to produce food inside the city. Now we have a natural park that is kind of desert and we want to promote biodiversity, bringing back agriculture to the limit of the city. This is a project we are developing right now. We are also moving from centralized energy production to decentralized production, energy production. We, w we need to add a metabolism to the city. We need really to work on this idea of self-sufficient blocks. N blocks that produce energy, that, and this energy is stored in el electrical cars, and then if you have a self-sufficient blocks, you will have a self-sufficient neighborhood because you will have blocks that are connected to each other. Obviously we are, what is important is this, this anatomical diagram is now used for our organization in order to categorize all the different projects.
And for example, now we are working, this is a solar pavilion that we built. We are experimenting on, a solar building is not a building with solar panels in the roof. You need to visualize that a solar building is something different. So we make this uh, solar pavilion with uh, Endesa. But also I, I built this solar house the, two years ago from the Institute of Advanced Architecture trying to have very careful architecture and inventing these flexible solar panels to have a very organic and human architecture with high technology. Another question is, it, now sometimes we are proud that the industry is in China and here we are designing. But this is wrong, this is a big mistake. The father of the father of your fathers were making production, first of all with Krasman, and second with the Industrial Revolution here in Italy or in Barcelona. And now we need to bring industry back to the cities, and that's why we are promoting uh, laboratories of fabrication, the idea that digital fabrication will promote a new industrial revolution. And obviously we are doing this with kids, and we are promoting uh, this idea of inventing digital machines in order to produce things that we use every day. This is, this is not only independent people that are doing this, this is the first uh, municipal uh, uh, Ateneum of fabrication. The city, I mean, a hundred years ago, there were not public libraries. Libraries were only in the universities. And the cities produce library for everyone. Now, Barcelona is promoting laboratories of fabrication for everyone in every district. We are already uh, building two of them. And we are also working on this idea of connecting people from their houses by sharing things. Today, economy is based on uh, buying and selling, but we could create other economy based on sharing. So we think that we should move from Internet of Things to Internet of Cities. We should promote that the people connect each other using technologies of information because they are able to share things, to share knowledge, to know who is making what, who could help me in our neighborhood, and how I can help other people in the in the neighborhood. And obviously we are working also with high level technology. We are developing the city OS, the system operation for the whole city in order to be managed all the information we are dealing in our cities. And we are applying these technologies also to the public space. We are right now transforming Paseo de Gracia, that is our main avenue, and we are doing something, let's say, in a very human scale. We are removing cars. I mean, Barcelona will remove 30% of the surface of the cars in the next 15 years because the cars have been inviting the cities in the last 50 years, and we think that the future of cities are the cities at the human scale. People should walk more. We should move information and move, I mean the people should be moving less, should walk more, and because we, we can move information more than things. So from that point of view, uh, Paseo de Gracia will introduce technologies of information in the city itself. And maybe one of the main projects we are doing is, I don't have here the right picture, but we are transforming uh, Plaza de las Glorias into something like this. Today, Plaza de las Glorias has a highway that was built in the 92, uh, but we are pulling down, Barcelona is spending 25 million euros in pulling down this highway in the middle of the city in order to make the main square of the 21st century that will be a pedestrian square. So, we are working not only on pulling down this highway that you see we have right now, but also this transformation will take 10 years and we want to allow people to use this space as soon as possible. So we are doing, and this is how we are going to pull down the highway, and this is, this is the highway we have in the middle of the city, and we are going to pull it down. We launch an international competition, but 
while all of this is produced, we are going to do self-transformation in order to allow the citizens' appropriation of this surface. For example, this is my office. This is where I work, that we have a, a kind of uh, a place like this. We are going, we learn how to do transformation like this, maybe spending 200,000 euros in order to have a public space in the next five years. So that means we need to introduce the time into the transformation of cities. Many people say this free land, I mean, is here in the last 10 years. Why cannot spend few money in order just to make it more accessible? In general, we think, no, we are waiting for a library. I have been waiting 20 years for a library. Why do you don't make something? So we are doing big transformation, but at the same time, we learn how to make these slow transformations in order to allow the people to use places like this. For example, this is another a slow transformation that we are doing. In many places, maybe will become a definitive transformation, but it's not like this. We are doing this transformation. And this is another um, tra uh, transformation we are doing because we are removing cars. This is an old road that we have in, it's called Perequar. You see only one meter sidewalk, five road, space for roads, lights that are uh, like for uh, roads. And we are transforming in something like this. It will, uh, we are doing only one space for cars and the street itself will look like a park. So the idea is that during the night, there will be no cars. During the morning, there will be some cars. In the weekend, will be no cars. So we need to introduce time into the city management. The idea that we need to transform a section of a street into something that can allow sometimes to be a park and sometimes to become a road is fundamental. The old section that I showed you at the beginning where this was for pedestrians, this was for cars, is over. We need to introduce time into city management. So, in order to work on this uh, direction, we create something called the city protocol, the city protocol society, where we think that the future, the cities need to work together because industry should not tell us what we should do. I mean, we are very good, right? We have a, a, a big fear, and maybe the most important in Europe, about the smart cities. But we say the industry is, we don't want to buy sensors. You should listen to us. We, cities, should tell the industry what we want to do. We, I mean, why we don't have electrical cars? Because the industry didn't want to produce electrical cars. And only in the big crisis of 2007, then the industry say, now we have the solution. So I think 21st century will be the century for cities. Cities should define the standards, how we want to live, and industry should produce what we want to use in our cities. So that's why we are working with industry and also with academia in order to create this city protocol society in order to define the new standards for the cities to come. And this is what I would like to share with you. Thank you.